Very well. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Secretary Ross, thank you for coming in and, and offering your, your testimony today. Uh, Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach, mentioned by my colleague, uh, was noted by the New York Times as laboring long and hard in his career, notably in the areas of voter suppression and nativism. He stated last year that he encouraged President Trump to add a question about citizenship to the census during the early weeks of Trump's presidency. Kobach said, quote, I raised the issue with the president shortly after he was inaugurated and, quote, he was absolutely interested in this. Shortly thereafter, in April of 2017, Steve Bannon asked you to speak to Mr. Kobach about his, quote, ideas about including a citizenship question on the 2020 decennial census. Did you speak to Mr. Kobach about his ideas on the citizenship question? Uh, as I described earlier in my testimony, Chris Kobach uh, did have a conversation with me early on in my... So, uh, so you did... I'm sorry, I'm not finished. Chris Kobach did have a conversation with me. He said he had a question he would like us to ask. Thank you. And I thought here, I'm sorry, I must reclaim my time. Mr. Kobach later sent an email to you on July 14th writing that the lack of the citizenship question, quote, leads to the problem that aliens who do not actually reside in the United States are still counted for congressional apportionment services. Of course, they do reside in the United States. They reside in my district. They're my constituents. But he then wrote, quote, it is essential that one simple question be added to the upcoming 2020 census. It's all there in black and white. Kobach is clear about, the, about his reason for adding the citizenship question in his correspondence to you. And it has nothing to do with the DOJ. It has nothing to do with the Voting Rights Act. It is about congressional apportionment to immigrants. But following that email and its concerning contact, contents, did you cut off all contact with Mr. Kobach, or did you speak with him again? I have no recollection of speaking with him again after that. Well, we do have a, a, you know, the Southern District of New York has identified a July 25th call between you and Mr. Kobach after that email. Uh, did you bring up Mr. Kobach or his ideas about the citizenship question with anyone in the Commerce Department after Kobach's email? We re I re ultimately rejected the question that Kobach wanted asked. So it does say here, uh, Judge Furman in the Southern District of New York wrote that you, in fact, mentioned Kobach again in a September 6th gen uh, meeting, uh, in a September 6th, in a September 6, 2017 meeting on the citizenship question. In fact, it was so concerning to your own staff that the general counsel expressed, quote, concern about your contact with Kobach and recommended talking to others first. Uh, do you recall anything about that meeting? No, I don't. If you, do have you, a document, if you don't have, if you have a document, I'll be glad to look at it. I'd be happy to, to, uh, to share that. And additionally, um, do you think it would be helpful for us to speak with Mr. Kobach about this matter? I have no idea. The committee has to make its own decisions. All right. Um, one other thing. It's been stated multiple times in this hearing that the question is a, a reinstatement of a previous question. But the last time a citizenship question specifically around citizenship was discussed on the census was in 1950. And I pulled up the old question here. And I know it's tough to see from far away, but I pulled up the old question that was originally on the census in 1950. And I see here that the question that is being proposed for 2020 is quite materially different. So it is not a reinstatement. It is not a, a, to placing again or a restoration of the original question. It is a materially different question. Now, the U.S. Census Act of 1974 requires that if the secretary finds such a change necessary, they must send a report to Congress on the proposed change, when the question is proposed, not when it is decided upon. Was that legally required report to Congress submitted to us? Uh, I, I can't respond to your question about the two documents you held up unless you showed them to me. I don't have them. It, I did not ask a question about the documents. I asked if the report that is required of you was submitted to Congress. We, we filed the required report 
On March 31st, 2017, we filed another required report on March 31st, 2018. One last thing. So uh, what we don't have is the required report to Congress. And while there's all of this debate about whether a citizenship question should be included or not included, the question I have is why are we violating the law to include any question whatsoever in the 2020 census? I don't believe she's I'm out of fire, time, Chairman. But you please do answer the question. I, I, I don't have any need to respond, sir. You don't have a need to respond? I have no need to respond. Um, okay, well, I'm asking. Can you, could you an answer that question, please? Would you repeat the question, please? We are now in violation of the U.S. Census Act of 1974, which requires you to submit a specific report to Congress ahead of, of any changes that you find necessary. This question is not a reinstatement of the 1950 question. It's a change, which means that change requires you to send a report to us while the question is proposed, not before it is decided or settled. So my question is, why are we violating the law to include this question in the 2020 well, uh, point, of, point of order, uh, I, I, we need to, at, at this particular point, the gentlewoman is talking about a statute that's been violated. There's been no enunciation of what that statute is. I don't even know what she's talking about. I'd be happy to provide it. I th yeah, I, I think she laid it out pretty nicely. Um, well, she said it twice. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm serious. Um, give him. But, but in previous testimony, Mr. Sure. Chairman, he Except said that they've, they've submitted reports. And, and, and there are three reports required. They submitted the first one and the second one but not the third one that is required to Congress. And it is in, this is here in uh, U.S. Code, 13 U.S. Code Section 140, 141, Population and Other Census Information, subsection F3. And I'd be happy to provide that to you. Now, I, I noticed that all your, your, I guess those are attorneys back there, squirming uh, around telling you stuff. Can you tell, maybe they, help, they can help us with this answer. Did they tell you what the answer is to that? Um, Got a lot uh, of people been, back there. I, I've been told by counsel that we have complied with all the regulations. I will take up with counsel the suggestions that have been made by the congressperson, and we will get back in due course on the record. As a follow-up on that question, can you give me that in writing, the fact that you complied with the law? And, Mr. Chair, I'd also like to note that, according to uh, our committee staff, there is not compliance with uh, F3. Well, he's going to give me, he said he did, so he's going to give me a statement. He's still sworn. <laughs> he's going to give me a statement saying he did. So I'm looking forward to that statement. Thank you. Counsel. All right. All right. All right. Mr. Chair. Yes. Hello? Yes. Um, I've got a point of order. Point of order. Um, I've noted today that several uh, members um, have spoken of and the witness invoked confidentiality. And uh, I understand this is happening in some other committees as well. And of course, we understand that there's something uh, called an executive privilege, like there's a priest penitent privilege, there's a spousal privilege that Congress may or may not recognize as a common law privilege. But when people invoke confidentiality, there's no confidentiality privilege unless some of the lawyers here could cite a case. I don't really understand the new the, trend of people. Mr. Chairman, cite. that's not a point of order. There, well, but I, I want to know what, how What's is, the rule that's been violated? I, but I it's wanna, not a point of order. Well, no, but I'm, as the point of order is how are we to respond what, when... What rule when, is being violated? I mean, the the I rule mean, that's I mean, being violated is that every witness owes truthful testimony to Congress. So I want to know when someone, invokes, <laughs> when someone invokes confidentiality, is that a rule? Let me, let me, let, I can just, oh, 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 hold up. Can you get, in your account, you, you've, you've said here, you've said in response to several questions, uh, certain things were confidential. Uh, is that right? Yes, and that I'm not authorized that to disclose. you're not authorized to. And, and if there is some special privilege that we don't know about, uh, I'd appreciate it if your counsel would let us know what that is. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm not a lawyer, sir. I, that's why I'm saying. I know you got. Are there any lawyers back there? 
Those are all them people behind you? You got a whole baseball team back there. <laughs> Well, 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 one of them, Mr. Chair, is a very fine former student of mine, perhaps. No, I'm, he, no, I'm not I, trying to be funny. I, yeah. I, no, I just, I, no, 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 wait a minute. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, before we move on, uh, I, could I seek unanimous consent to submit these uh, documents? Tell me what they are. Tell me what they are. Uh, the first is the U.S. Code that I referenced, and the other two documents are the two original questions. Without objection, so ordered. Thank now, much. can you, will you, Mr. Rasmussen? So, so Mr. Chair, all, all I'm asking for...